Welcome to the World on Water Global Sailing News. This week we're at Hamilton Island Race Week, racing around the Australian Great Barrier Reef Islands. Hi, my name is Rob Brown. Globally, in the last seven days, we looked at Hamilton Island Race Week, day one, and our camera is on Bo Jess, the Mod 70 Trimaran. The mixed two-person offshore keelboat for the 2024 Olympics. The winner of Cows Week, 2019. The Tokyo Olympic Test Event, day one. And day two for the Finns in Japan. Day one at Hamilton Island Race Week, the second largest fleet ever are often racing around the beautiful islands of Australia's Great Barrier Reef. Over 2,000 sailors descended on Hamilton Island for the 35th staging of the event. Boat and crew preparation is paramount. It is a huge effort for owners, crews, race officials and organisers to stage such an event. The Grand Prix IRC divisions are being hotly contested with Marcus Blackmore's TP52 Hooligan in a great battle with Gordon Kettleby's Zen. Hot on their heels, the handicap honours is Wild Eight, which is performing well as expected. The multi-hulls are well represented again this year. Carl Clock's Bo Jest is the fastest boat out there, but lies in fourth position on handicap. Black in Black, skippered by Michael Vanderward, is leading the charge on handicap. In other IRC divisions, Ray Roberts' Team Hollywood is dominating Division 2. The majority of the fleet are the cruising divisions. Spinnaker, non-spinnaker, mono and multi, large and small. For the first time in sailing's Olympic history, a mixed two-person offshore keelboat event will be introduced for the Paris 2024 Olympic Sailing Competition. More than 70% of the globe is water. This is sailing's field of play. 
Offshore sailing is played out across long distances in light teasing airs and violent, roaring conditions that test any athlete's resolve. Offshore sailing is the ultimate test of a sailor's endurance, navigation and decision-making. The Olympic Games is the pinnacle event for all sailors. It is where the stars of the sport come to the forefront and become household names. Paris 2024 is now embracing a major part of sailing and new heroes will be born. Offshore sailing is a ready-made universal discipline that every World Sailing member nation can participate in. Qualification events for Paris 2024 will be held on each continent in one design boats that are already regionally available and can be accessed as charter boats. A list of equipment that can be used in offshore events will be approved by World Sailing and these will be used at the qualification events and available for the sailors. Boats will be equalised to ensure fair competition. Qualification will be tight with up to 15 nations qualifying to the Olympic Games but with every continent represented. All of the equipment approved by World Sailing for qualification events will be suitable for Paris 2024. World Sailing's Council will decide the equipment by the end of 2023, at the latest. This will ensure greater participation levels in qualification events and prevent qualified nations investing in boats and technology to gain an advantage. At the Paris 2024 Olympic Games, every boat will be supplied and will be identical to deliver a fair competition where the best all-round sailors will conquer. The mixed offshore event will comprise of three days and two nights at sea off the coast of France. Starting in Marseille, the race course and length will not be announced until close to the competition, in order that it can take advantage of the latest weather forecasts. Options will include a number of long and short courses heading towards the west and east of France. Whoever crosses the finish line first will be crowned Olympic champion. Safety and security will be provided by the French Navy and Mediterranean forces who have a long experience of supporting major ocean sailing races. A presentation and demonstration of security and safety at sea took place at the 2019 World Cup Series final in Marseille. The mixed offshore event will be the longest and toughest of all Olympic events. Appealing to Olympic rights holders and international media, the race will capture the imagination of millions and will be the first event in the Olympic Games that can be viewed 24 hours a day. Live broadcasting, tracking and analytics direct from the boat and onboard vision will enable world sailing and global media to tell compelling stories of all the athletes and provide insight into life on board in an endurance sailing event. E-sailing has emerged as a true touchpoint for sailors and non-sailors alike to enjoy the intricacies of sailing within the confines of their home or on the go. At Paris 2024, tens of millions of sailing and Olympic sports fans will have the opportunity to compete simultaneously in the offshore event, comparing themselves to the real-life Olympians. Mixed offshore sailing will captivate and inspire millions before, during and after Paris 2024. The Olympic Games has never seen an endurance discipline such as offshore sailing and the excitement is building. The Olympic showdown has begun. 14 of Australia's finest sailors in eight classes commenced the battle for domination of the waters in Inoshima, Japan, the site of the Tokyo Olympics 2020. We've got one year now to Tokyo and we're at the um, Ready Steady Tokyo test event. So I guess for me, four years ago, this time, last test event, I'd just finished my first ever dinghy regatta and um, hadn't done very well. So for me to be here now is, um, I'm really happy about that and I'm really excited to use this as um, a huge learning opportunity with, I guess, the equivalent of our world's gold fleet. So everyone's here and we're in the Olympic venue, so it's an invaluable learning opportunity. We have 14 athletes 
competing in eight disciplines, two in the lasers. So, um, you know, having number one and two in the lasers, they have allowed us to have two competitors in the fleet, which is really great because, you know, it's a vital part of our, our, our Olympic selection. Uh, very strong winds and huge waves out there today, um, and that's, you know, come from the typhoon that's just been um, down the coast from us. That's now passing to the north, and so we're going to see the, the seas abate, the wind abate. Um, we're expecting reasonable breezes tomorrow, and then during the latter part of the week, we're expecting, you know, quite light winds to fall into the hole behind the storm, in effect. So we've just had three weeks training in Japan, which has been awesome. We've seen all different types of conditions. We haven't raced since uh, April, but we have won the last couple of events. So we're hoping to keep the momentum going. But yeah, feeling really good on the boat. We love all different sort of conditions. So throw anything out of Japan. Yeah, we're really happy where we're at the moment. Um, like Lisa was saying before, we've been undefeated now for almost a year since this regard last year. So um, yeah, like really happy. We're training hard, working hard as well. Um, has been the easiest year um, with some challenges and other projects going on but looking forward this is actually going to be a good test this week to see where we're at um, and then we have the world cup coming up afterwards which will have a lot more boats and be you know some really good exciting racing as well so yeah really happy yeah i think uh as the quad goes things are obviously starting to wind up with with under a year to go until the until the game starts so uh yeah it's starting to get pretty busy and obviously the olympic test event starting tomorrow um, pretty big thing for, for everyone to do well here so it's yeah pretty important time of the quad yeah it would obviously mean the world to rep represent Australia at the games um, yeah, it's obviously something I've, I've campaigned for for the last sort of six seven years so um, yeah and to represent Australia in any sport and at the at the pinnacle of it as well um, is an incredible thing and yeah I'm looking forward to possibly having that opportunity I think uh, from you know being world champion reigning Olympic champion um, you know obviously the goal is to win but uh, you know being on the podium is is a pretty big feat and um, you know just kind of getting used to the smaller fleets and um, and kind of getting good results of being consistent in that sort of environment is a pretty good way to start. Uh, the challenge we've had you know a range of conditions um, I think you know the last few days have been really windy but the regatta looked like it can be pretty uh, light towards the end of it so I think you know being consistent throughout the week which is uh, something that you know I look forward to and um, and having a range of conditions is something that I, I kind of enjoy as well so it should be a good week. Yeah it feels pretty different like it's really strange being the only one here from Australia and um, I guess there's a fair bit of hype around it when you go down to the boat park, everyone's super serious. So yeah, it's um, a different atmosphere, but I'm, I'm liking it so far. Day one here in Enoshima for the 2019 Olympic test event. The cyclone has passed through, so we have a very nice leftover gradient breeze of sort of around 12 knots. pretty important to, to just put in two solid results and sort of be able to give you something to work on going into the week and yeah I mean the conditions today are probably not what we're going to see for the rest of the regatta as well so uh, making the most of that was quite important and um, yeah I mean a nice sort of 15 to 18 knots was yeah, some nice sailing out. It could have been worse but not by, not by very much. I only did one race and got a black flag. The first one um, started like the first lap was pretty good and then just had some issues downwind and spiralled a little bit. The waves were kind of big because the last few days have been pretty uh, pretty big, but you know it was good sailing conditions. So uh, I, th I think the heat, everyone's feeling the heat. It's pretty ruthless when you've got to go two full races in uh, 32 degrees. Yeah, I mean you got all the top guys here, and um, you only have 25 or so boats on the water, so it's tired and every point counts. Um, and it's just, it's, it's um, really tight and just cutthroat racing, so that's what we're here for. I'm um, looking forward to an ice bath tonight and um, we'll see what tomorrow brings. Cows Week Day 7. An increasing southwesterly breeze influenced the overall class winners for black and white divisions. James Wilson and Ed Peel's Red Wing Quail achieved a perfect score to win the white group division. Father and son skippers show how happy they are.
Cows Week 2019 with our overall winners. Thomas here was on all week. His dad helmed half the week. Ed helmed half the week. You must feel over the moon. Yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> it's pretty good. Winning Cows Week. Not many people have done that. No, first time. We've won the class a few times. First white group win and first time we've won overall. Brilliant. It's fantastic. Not race uh, with a lot of different pressions, uh, with some puffs. A very hard race. The downwinds were, I think, the key for everybody. You could gain a lot or lose a lot if you had a good pressure, if you were playing the waves well. So I think I did a, a good job today. Happy, happy with my downwind. I think I was eight at the, at the top mark. Then I had a very good. Uh, First downwind, I think I, I managed the, the fleet well and uh, I was able to, to keep the lead. It's super hard. Uh, yesterday we had a, a very hard day physically. The, the, it's brutally warm as well. My heart rate goes up super quick here. It's a little bit different than other places. I think guys must be prepared for everything, like, like always. Today we did one race uh, in about eight knots, I would say, quite uh, shifty, quite tricky. I had two good downwinds, um, which allowed me to catch up a lot of boats and finish fourth uh, overall. I've been here last year already, so it's my second time in Japan and the conditions are normally really, really good. Uh, only this week is a bit lighter, I guess. Uh, yeah, it's important to come here and learn the conditions if I get the, or when I get the Olympic ticket. And, uh, and also for us it's an Olympic qualifier. Um, but by the in the country. The Sailing Champions League final has been staged in St. Moritz. David Chapman, Finn and Charlotte Alexander, Zach Quinlan from Royal Sydney Yacht Squadron won the battle and have brought home the silver trophy for the very first time. Here we are, the final day of the Sailing Champions League Finals in San Moritz. It's been a long journey for all the teams. Congratulations to the winners, Royal Sydney Yacht Squadron from Australia. Royal Sydney Yacht Squadron is Sailing Champions League winner 2019. We look forward to seeing you next year for another season of the Sailing Champions League. Well, that's it for now from Hamilton Island and another great week from the world on water. Be watching for more boating news next Friday. I'm Rob Brown.